Today's video, we're gonna be looking at the different formats that you can germinate seeds in. So GPP pods, soil blocking, and your classic plastic trays, and which ones yield the best result. So the rules for this experiment is that all seeds are the same variety. And the only thing that has changed is the cells themselves or the format in which the plant is germinated in. What did not change is the potting soil. They're all using regular potting soil. If you wanna see the reason why I choose potting soil over a compost potting soil mix or just a straight compost mix, I did do a video on this, so go check that out if you wanna learn more as to why I chose straight potting soil. Let's look at which ones yielded the best results and the science behind why that is. Now, what I will say is when we get these plants outdoors, they usually level the playing field pretty fast. And then in the name of science this year, I'm going to be growing the seedlings that were started in cubes versus jiffy pods versus the plastics in separate beds and marking them as such. So we can truly track if this initial stage truly affects that adult plant. My hypothesis here, and you can state your hypothesis down below, likely won't. The only one that I'm not confident it's gonna give me very good adult plants is unfortunately the seed cells. I got very sick here. I'm pretty sure I had COVID to be honest uh, and I was down and out for about five days. I left my light hood way too close to my seedlings and I stunted all the ones in the tray. So they really don't work well for this experiment. And so I'm just gonna kind of omit them entirely. I'll show you what's going on with them and why I think that just starting in the trays in general is the least effective in regards to the science of what's going on there, but omit those as a true testimony to what trays should look like. They should not look that poor. <laughs> That's all on me. Okay, so first up is the Jiffy Pods. So if you guys don't know what these are, I guess these this isn't the Jiffy brand. This is Cocoa Beats Jr. So this is coconut coir inside of a cotton section. So this isn't that plastic. This is a decompostable cotton which is actually a very big difference compared to what they are but they are still the the vacuum or the dehydrated pucks that you hydrate so this is the results from this guy very good very happy plant doing incredibly well again started at the same time as all these other ones so the next one is actually the soil block itself so we can see roots kind of on the sides very similar to what we see with this cocoa pod here and again very healthy development maybe slightly farther behind, but really not, not by that much. And I have a hypothesis for why that is, but we can go over that later. And then this next imagery, because I'm not gonna pick up the whole tray, is the plastics. So the plastics, you can see poor, poor growth, but again, not true testimony to what that tray should look like, but we'll go over why ultimately, just in general, they don't yield the best results. So two things about dehydrated pucks and the soil blocking is we have something called air pruning. Now, air pruning is simply the process of the roots getting exposed to air, kind of getting a root tip to them, breaking off, and then forcing more growth back along the stem. This gives us a really healthy root development in the initial stages of this plant. What we don't find in a plastic germinated setup is that air exposure, and therefore we tend to get these really long gangly roots that go into the bottom tray and ultimately are not air pruned what whatsoever because of the humidity in that bottom tray. Regardless of if you're bottom watering or not, just the ambient humidity in that bottom tray will affect the root development. The other thing is we don't end up with as much lateral root development in the plastic pods compared to that of these more air exposed environments. So ultimately, if we're looking for more of a fibrous root system, a more robust root system that's able to capture more nutrients, um, deal with compacted, potentially compacted soils a little bit better, and ultimately stay away from dehydration, from underwatering and be able to source water naturally more effectively and be able to withstand some manipulation from wind or uh, foot traffic around the plant, then we do wanna go with a swell block or the compressed pucks that allow for that air movement to take place. Now, what I will say is that the blocks and the pucks will not give us that effect if we jam all them together. We don't allow the air movement to take place between all the seedlings. So that's why in the soil block uh, video in particular, I did mention separating the blocks 
to achieve that disbursement of roots. Now, the reason why I think there's such a drastic difference between the, the pucks and the blocks actually comes down to the soil compression. So I stressed in the soil blocking video, the actual compression of that block and how truly important that was. However, unfortunately, I'm not Iron Man and I can't get perfect compression or compaction throughout the entire soil block. And so because of that, we end up with some air space and ultimately not the best root development or allowing or forcing those roots outward. With the dehydrated pucks, however, we have a combination of a pre-compacted type um, environment. And then we're also again restricted by the actual netting itself, which again will only allow for so much expansion. And if I actually push and prod on these, you can feel the firmness when compared to that of the soil block. That firmness really truly does drive roots out horizontally and doesn't allow them to necessarily go downward with such ease. And with the soil block, we do find that really downward motion and ultimately less focus on branching and um, teeing off or wying of those roots when compared to that of the cocoa block. So I think the reason why you're seeing such a robust, healthy plant out of these compressed pucks comes down to the air pruning aspect, which kind of sidebars the entire plastic use. And then we also have that benefit of that lateral or horizontal type root development that we don't see from the soil block due to the compaction. So is it because of the soil medium? I don't believe so. I'm not fertilizing any of these yet, so it's not a fertilizer factor. I'm not even adjusting that pH of my water yet. So it's not a, none of them. They've all been treated the same all the same variety of plant and all under the same actual lights themselves, same brand, everything. So none of that is a factor. All of them have the same amount of air speeds, et cetera and so forth. So I do think it's the compression and the air pruning. If you had to choose or if I had to rank these from a soil science perspective, I would put the plastic at the bottom. I'd put soil blocks in the middle and cocoa peat pods or compressed pucks at the top. And that's only because I'm not Iron Man. <laughs> if you have tips or tricks for really compressing those soil blocks, like really truly compressing said soil block, please let me know in the comments down below because then I think it would actually be a tie between the two. Anyways, I wanna thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.